Hello friends, I am Mr. Sampada Kulkarni, welcomes you in my channel Tech Talks. Today, I am going to explain one of the concept from C programming, that is how to pass an array to the function. In this video session, I am going to cover only the 1D array. For the introduction about functions, you can go through my previous video that I am flashing on right up corner. Same thing for an introduction about an array, you can go through my previous video. So now let's start with how to pass an array to the function. For this, I am going to explain it with the help of C program. This is one program where I have declared an array of type integer and of size 5. Here I am going to accept the value from a user and I am going to display it. This is a simple program where I am going to perform all these tasks within the main function only. Now as I have said previously, I am going to explain how to pass an array to the function for this what we need to do. So now let's focus on the program where my requirement is if I want to pass an array, this integer type array to the function for the display purpose that is I want to display the content of an array within the separate function what I need to do. So let's start with the program where very first thing I need to decide what will be the prototype for my function. So now as I want to perform the display operation there will not be any return type. So for no any return type I need to use a void keyword as a return type. I need to decide the name of function that I am going to use a function name display opening closing bracket it indicates that this is a function and here we need to pass the parameters to the function. We need to declare what will be the data type and how many parameters will be there. So now as we have decided to pass an array and array is of type integer so I need to provide this will be an array of type integer. So first integer is going to indicate that key array will be of type integer and here subscript is used to indicate that this is an array not a single integer type value. At the end we need to declare it with the or end with a semicolon. So this is nothing but the function prototype declaration. So we have done with the function prototype declaration. Now let's think about the definition. Here at the end I am going to include the definition of the function. So the same return type we need to use over here. The same function name we need to use over here including the same number of arguments as well as with the same data type. But here we need to give the name to the variable with its size. It was not included in the prototype declaration. Here it is mandatory to define key what will be the data type and whether this is an array or not. So now as we are going to deal with array that's why we need to provide a subscript over here and its data type. The variable name to provide the variable name, it's not mandatory if it is a function prototype declaration. If it is function prototype declaration, we need to instruct to compiler only about the number of parameters and its data type. That's it. So here I have not mentioned any name, but if you want, you can give the name to the variable over here as well. 
but it is mandatory in case of function definition so here we are starting with the function definition here i am giving a comment like this is nothing but the function definition that we are going to provide over here so what we need to perform with this function we need to perform the task of displaying an array so now here what we will do this is nothing but the task which is used in our previous program to display an array so we need to remove all this thing from our main program correct this one is our main program we need to remove all this thing and we need to put all these things or all these line of statement within the main sorry within the display function so what we'll do we'll first of all remove all these things from the main function uh, we'll put all these things in our display function now here what is going to be happen so display is nothing but a function which is used to display the array whose name is a in this definition so now here we need to make change of like the array name will be a here we need to declare the integer type variable i that we are going to use as index in our program all of you must be knowing the scope rule of the variables like i if i am going to use that in my function i need to declare it the same thing if a is my variable name of an array in my function i need to use an a over here not an array because array is a variable which is declared in the main function and a is a variable which is declared in the function display both are different or two different variables so now what we need to do over here here first of all as we have done with the function prototype declaration now function definition and now let's go for the function call what i need to write down for a function call so function call will be always the name of function the opening closing bracket in which we need to provide the parameter or the argument which we need to pass to the function so here in this case we are going to pass an array that's why a variable name of the array we need to pass as a parameter so now this is very important thing while calling the function do not write down its data type no we are not going to provide any data type over here as well as do not provide the subscript with their size no it's not allowed we need to pass only the name of the array this name of the array is going to be used as a base address of the array base address is nothing but the starting address of an array ultimately this array is going to be called to the function with the help of its base address so wherever this array is declared in the memory initialized in the memory of that array only the base address we are going to pass and that will be collected in the another variable whose name is a in the function display so now let's see whether we are getting the correct output or not now before that i'd like to give a comment over here this is nothing but a function call correct so now what our program is going to do now our program is going to do like array is declared of size 5 we are going to enter five values from a user using scanf function and to display the entire array we are going to call a function display by passing the array variable or a base address of array so now let's see what is the output for this program so now let's execute this code after executing this code our program is error free is not going to give any error and it's waiting for the input for all five values which we are going to accept from a user for an array so now here we are getting the output entered values of an array are 1 2 3 4 5 that we have displayed with the help of function display so now here you must be getting how to pass an array to the function now let's add one more function which will be going to be used to 
accept the value from a user with the help of function. So now here let's write down one another function accept. Here again I am going to pass an array to the function and accordingly will accept the value from user. So this is nothing but again function prototype declaration. Let's write down the definition for the accept function. So I am going to write down that definition over here. Uh, let's copy and paste it. We need to make the change in the function name. The name of function is accept. The rest of things are same. That is one single parameter. We are going to pass which is nothing but an array of type integer. Here only just uh, printing the value we are going to accept it. That's why I write down the scanf function with the help of ampersand. Here we are going to accept the integer value for all the i that is i will be executed from 0 to 4 till the condition is true. So total 5 values we are going to accept over here. Now we need to change our main function. We need to remove all these things from the main function and what we need to do? We need to call the function accept over here. So what we will do? Here again we will pass the base address of an array to the function and let's check what will be the output. So now what we have done? I am going to repeat the things again. I have declared the accept function over here prototype declaration where single integer parameter will be there but it is not for a single value this will be an array. Next I have declared I have def uh, defined the function that is the same function name accept with the integer array whose name is a. For that array I am going to accept a value from a user in the accept function. and that accept function we are going to call over here. So this one is our function call. So now let's check the output what we are getting the output. So now let's execute it again and let's check the output. Now our program is again error free and waiting for a input over here. So let's give the input 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and it is giving the output like Entered values of an array are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The output will be just same as of the previous one because we are only making the change like whatever the task we have done in the main function that we are going to perform within a accept function. So now here we can say that we have performed two separate tasks accept, accepting of an array that we have performed in accept function and displaying of an array that we have performed in a display function. Ultimately, in both the functions we have pass an array to the function. Here I would like to explain that why it is needed to pass an array to the function because array this variable is declared within a main which will not be having the scope in the accept function. So if I will declare an integer array within a accept function that we need to return back and while returning an array we need to return back its address correct so if we will return back an address that we need to collect somewhere in the pointer variable currently in this video I am not going to use any concept of pointers so that's why it's better to use an array or declare an array in the main and pass its base address to both of the functions. The return type of both of the function is void. That's why we are not going to return back anything from the both of the function. That's why we are not going to collect anything in the main function. So hope you must have understand what to do if we want to pass an array to the functions. functions. Now Currently, I am assuming that you are knowing the concept of arrays as well as the functions. So now, I would like to forward to the IDE for practical demonstration of this program. How to pass 2D array 
to the function. So now let's start with the program. Here a simple program I have written where one matrix of size 3 by 3 is declared over here. This matrix declaration is nothing but the 2D array declaration. This is of type integer. Total 9 number of values it will hold 3 values in every column and that many 3 rows will be there. So 3 values in every column and 3 number of rows will be there. So that's why 3 into 3 are equal to 9 will be the size of this variable matrix. This is 2D array that's why it will require nested for loop for the for any operation which we want to perform on the matrix. So now let's consider here first of all I am going to read the values of matrix from user. So that's why I need to use the outer for loop for three number of rows and for every row the column values are nothing but three that is three number of columns will be there. So for every row three values in every column will be there. So that's why inner for loop will work for number of columns. So here I would like to explain this for loop is for the number of rows who are available in your matrix and this for loop will be for columns in your matrix. Now here the variable name is matrix so that's why I need to provide here the address of matrix for ith and jth position. For ith and jth position the value will get accepted over here. After accepting the value here I am trying to display the matrix in a matrix form. For this, this again outer for loop is for row position, inner for loop is for column position and with the help of printf statement I am trying to display all the values who are available in my matrix variable. So now let's try for the execution of this program. I am going to execute this and my program is now waiting for the input. So now here I am taking the input to my program are nothing but the next 9 values in my matrix and here we are getting the output like entered matrix is and we are displaying all the contents in a rows and in columns form. So now this is nothing but the basic about how to accept an array 2D array and how to display it. But the same thing if I want to do with the help of functions what I need to do. So very first thing now let's try for displaying the content of matrix with the help of function by passing a parameter as a matrix to the function. So here I am giving the name to my function is display as I want to pass a matrix as a parameter I need to provide its data type integer and I need to pass the matrix that's why this will indicate that the whatever parameter we are going to pass to function will be of type 2d array. Here we need to keep in mind the column size it is mandatory and we need to provide it. This is nothing but your function prototype declaration. So here I would like to explain or I would like to give the comment like this is nothing but the function declaration. Now let's see what will be the definition for this function. So I'd like to de define the function like the function name is display. Here I need to collect the whatever I am going to pass to the function in integer type variable of two type 2d array and here I need to provide the size of the matrix that is how many columns are there, how many rows are there. After that I would like to write down the body or the content or a line of code of my function. So what I need to do? I need to perform the same task but in the function. So that's why for simplicity 
I am going to cut this line of code from my main program and I am going to paste it in the definition of my function matrix. Now here I need to make simple changes like the variable name of matrix is M. So that's why I need to give variable name M over here. The next important thing is I need to declare the index variables i and j in my function. That's it. Now after that, is it needed to return any back, anything back from the function display? No. That's why I'll mention the return type of my function is void. The same change I need to do in the declaration of my function. So that's why I'm going to provide over here the return type as display. So what is this? This is nothing but my function definition. Correct? Now here function definition we have done. We have done with the function declaration. Now let's see what will be the function call. So to make a function call, I need to write down the same name to the function ended with a semicolon. But my function is parameterized function. Here I am going to pass one parameter to the function that will be a 2D array. So what I need to pass as a parameter. So keep in mind. This is very important thing as far as today's session is concerned. What we need to pass to the function or how to call a function by passing 2D array as a parameter. So the answer is we need to pass the base address of the 2D array as a parameter to the function. This is nothing but a variable which is 2D array which is already declared in my function whose size is 3 by 3. For this I am going to pass its base address. That base address is going to be collected in a variable m of the same size and is nothing but the 2D array again of the same data type integer. In this way we can make a call to the function. So now let's see whether we are getting the correct output or not. Now one more important thing as the return type of function is void so that's why we are not going to return back anything from a function that's why it's not needed to collect the return value. So that's why there will not be any return type of this function. So now let's check whether we are getting the correct output or not. So now let's execute a function again sorry program again and now let's check the output what will be the output for my code now this program is waiting for input now let's try to give next input to the program so here i am going to give these six values sorry nine values to my program and now let's check whether i am getting the correct output or not yes i am getting the correct output so here entered matrix is so what we have done we have First of all, declare a function over here. We have written the function definition and here we have made a function call to the same function. So now my next task is to accept the matrix from function again. So I'll write down one more function over here. So now I am going to write down the name of my function is nothing but accept. Here. I need to provide the parameter to my function is nothing but again 2D array. So that's why I need to provide the parameter to this function as of size 3 by 3. Here it's not necessary to provide the row size but the column size is mandatory. So now what I need to write down in the definition of my function. So here I would, write, I would like to write down the name of my function is nothing but accept. What I need to pass as a parameter. So its data type is integer. Here I am providing the name of my matrix is M of the size 3 by 3. So that's why here I am providing the size 3 by 3. After that I need to write down the body of my function where I need to accept the values 
from user so that's why i am going to cut all these things from main function and i am going to paste it within the accept function now here we need to keep in mind to make a change in the variable name as i have declared the variable of name m so that's why i need to provide the m as a variable name over here now here i am going to use the index variables i and j that's why i need to declare it in my function i and j now the next thing i need to make a function call so what i need to write down to make a function call so now here i need to give the function name over here provided by the base address of 2d array that is nothing but the matrix and ended with a semicolon same thing whatever we have done in the display function now the next important thing as we are not going to return back anything from a function so that's why its return type will be void the same change i need to do while declaration of my function its return type will be void now let's check whether we are getting the output or not so now let's execute again a program and here it is waiting for the input so i am taking the input from user next 40 50 sorry i am executing it again 10 and 90 now let's check whether we are getting the same output or not so yes it is giving the same output for my program so what we have done we have pass whatever the memory allotted for my matrix for this matrix i am going to pass its base address to the function accept that base address is going to be collected in variable m and for that many values it will accept the values from a user the same matrix we are going to pass to the display function here again this m is going to become formal argument and with that variable we are trying to display it now let's see if i'll remove this size or the row size from my function whether my program will work or not so now let's re execute a code here i am going to give the input and yes i am getting the same output for my program so in this way we can perform our practical so now thank you dear friends for listening my video if you like the content and the video please like the video and subscribe my channel thank you